Let's take a look inside. Start by removing the bypass screw. Refer to your owner's manual how to set this properly according to your hydraulic system. Use your 9 16 wrench to take off the jam nut. There's a washer behind that. And you'll notice that behind that is a gasket that's included in the oil seal repair kit. In the event that you have to reuse this gasket, make sure you turn the bypass screw out of it instead of pulling it straight off and dragging that gasket across the threads and damaging it. Then use your quarter inch allen to remove the bolts. It may be necessary to use your two flat blade screwdrivers to pry off the end plate placing the screwdrivers underneath these tabs and being careful not to damage the surface. At this point, you can inspect the bearing, the surface of the end plate, and the G-rotor for any sort of damage or scoring that may have been caused by contaminated hydraulic oil. Next, we'll remove the G-rotor housing by gently tapping it off with a rubber hammer. Inspect this inner surface for any deep scratches or scoring that may have been caused by contaminated hydraulic oil. Notice there's a number stamped into this housing. That will help you identify which hydraulic motor model you're working on. You can also measure the thickness of this housing and use that with your owner's manual to identify which model it is. Notice there's a big pin and a small pin on here to keep you from installing it incorrectly. Next, inspect the G-rotor itself for any scratches or scoring and replace if necessary. Examine the G-rotor pin for any gouges in here just from normal operation and replace if necessary. Next we'll remove the complete shaft and seal assembly. First remove the slinger ring. This is to help keep water out of this bearing in the event of a mechanical seal leak on the water side of the pump. It may be necessary to take your one inch pipe and press down on this retaining ring to loosen it up enough to remove it. Flip the assembly over and push out the shaft. Before removing the shaft assembly components, notice the order they're in. You have a bearing, a spacer the seal is pressed into, two O rings, another spacer, a thrust washer, a thrust bearing, another thrust washer in your retaining ring. Make sure these go back in the same order they came out. To remove that retaining ring, put a corner of your screwdriver into it, just twist it out. It may help to lay these components out in order on a clean surface to keep from contaminating any of these parts. You never want to drag that lip seal over this retaining ring groove. So instead we'll remove the small retaining ring on top of the bearing and press all of these components out the other side. Push this off being careful not to damage the bearing. And we'll go to the press. Press directly on the shaft to remove the bearing and seal. At this point, examine this portion of the shaft for any excessive wear or pitting and replace as necessary. You can also examine the bearing, make sure it turns smooth and isn't tight or lumpy. That bearing is included in the hydraulic motor seal repair kit as well. 
You can examine the seal for any wear or damage, or if this lip is pushed out backwards the other way, the hydraulic lines were most likely reversed. To remove the seal from this cartridge, press it out. Now we're ready to reinstall. The first step in reassembly will be to press the new seal into the cartridge. Place the open end of the cartridge up. Place the seal in with the lip facing up. Use that one inch piece of pipe. Being careful not to damage the lips of the seal. And press that right down into it. Now we can reassemble our shaft assembly. The first thing will be to Put this retaining ring back on. Notice there's a flat side and a round side to this. You'll want to install this with the flat side facing up towards the threads. Easiest way to put this on is start it by hand, push it down on the table, lock it in. Next, we have a thrust washer, and again, make sure these parts are totally clean and free of debris. Next, thrust bearing, the second thrust washer, the spacer, it can go on either way. Next, we want to put our new seal back on, and you want to stretch this over the end of this shaft, pushing that on, and then Put it on this side of the shaft. You want that lip facing down. Carefully work that over the edge of the shaft without folding the lip over. And now we can press the bearing back on. Place the new bearing onto the press and we'll press the shaft assembly threaded side down into the bearing. You'll feel it bottom out on this back retaining ring. This spacer may stay somewhat loose, so you'll have to try to line this up as best you can. We'll install our two new O-rings up to the bottom of this cartridge and apply a small amount of grease to the O-rings. press this assembly back into the motor housing. Once again, making sure that spacer is as lined up as possible. And these O-rings are straight. Be careful not to pinch the O-rings when you press this in. Use your one inch piece of pipe. Press the assembly in until you feel the bottom out. Now we can reinstall the snap ring. As well as the small snap ring. Being careful not to damage the bearing. Once you get this back together, you notice this snap ring is slightly above that bearing. I'm going to press that down until it bottoms out on the bearing. At this point, turn the shaft. Make sure it turns nice and smooth. If it feels like it's bound up, press the shaft assembly out again and look for a damaged component or any of those spacers or washers that may have, been, that may have shifted before you pressed it in. 
we can continue our 